Okay, I showed you on the prior video um, the clockwise counterclockwise movements of the pole and how it is always inverse to the centripetal point. You see this bright spot in the center? We have movement along the centrifugal in a manner that's clockwise and the centripetal will always be inverse. As you can see here at the center, it is counterclockwise. Logically, exactly, it can't exist any other way. So, now, let's, this is almost like an erase board, a chalkboard where you can actually erase it. See here, I just sit there and erase it. Now, as I explained to you, a magnet is um, a, a wave front, a, a field front, excuse me, of a toroid and a hyperboloid. But how can we look at that at a two-dimensional projection of the electrostatic longitudinal lines that are hitting the phosphorus of the back side of the CRT tube? Well, I'll take a close look as I bring this 2x2x1 two two inch neodymium closer here. We'll not look at this egg shape yet, but I'll explain it in a second, so I won't get so close. Here you can actually see the hyperboloid. If you don't know what hyperboloid is, look it up on Google, okay? A hyperboloid, and this is like looking at a donut cut in half. You can actually see the toroid at the center here. This is the only way Mother Nature knows how to mediate out her field pressure differentials. It is a hyperboloid and a toros, a toroid, a toroidal... Uh, point along the dielectric plane of inertia, which is right here, and we have the centrifugal divergence here, and the returning centripetal convergence here. So you're looking at the inside of a half-cut donut here. People know what a torus or a toroid is. And up here we have the hyperboloid. Well, what's a hyperboloid shape? Like an hourglass shape. You know, an hourglass is very, very thin in the middle, on two bulbous ends, you're seeing the hourglass hyperboloid of the point of centripetal convergence. But what you're seeing here is the toroid of centrifugal divergence. Mother Nature works in a conjugate relationship. Um, Tesla, Faraday, Steinmetz, Heaviside, Eric Dollard understood this. However, none of them ever explained magnetism. I was the first person to explain how magnetism works, what magnetism is. And you have this conjugate relationship between centrifugal divergence, centripetal convergence that can only be mediated out through a spatial or a Euclidean torus and a non-Euclidean or hyper-Euclidean or a trans-geometric shape which is the hyperboloid. This is the formation of counterspace of a hypergeometry or a metageometry is what I actually specifically refer to it. But the Greeks actually understood this. Many ancient cultures understood the conjugate relationship between phenomena and noumena. All geometry starts from a point, right? Well, you're going to draw a triangle, you know, you start with a point. You draw a cube, you're going to start with a point, right? Well, what's prior to that point? What is the point of inertia? Does it have a geometry? Well, yes, it does. The geometry is the hyperboloid. Now, if I bring it closer here, exactly as I told you, and this is kind of difficult to explain easily, you'll see an egg formation right here that exists at a ratio of 1 to 5. This is the exact same phase differential that exists on either pole of a magnet. South pole is compressed at a ratio of 5. North pole is rarefied at a ratio of 1. So you have a ratio of electromagnetic retardation of 1 to 5. Oh my god, the golden ratio. Yeah, that's uh, EM retardation, electromagnetic retardation. But here you actually see the conjugate field the torus and the hyperboloid. I should come up with a special geometry or a geometric name for this conjugate relationship, but uh, really the simplest way to explain it is inertia and the loss of inertia. That which defines a magnet is field coherency. Before this was magnetized, it was nothing other than a pathetic block of nothing. It is a uh, ceramic block with chromium plating on it what gives a denotation to a magnet is field coherency. But then you have to explain what the hell magnetism is. What is this conjugate relationship that exists between the torus and the hyperboloid? But here you can actually see it. Okay? Thanks for watching and catch you later.